Well, first of all, dysphagia is a problem that is connected to swallowing. I don't know if you ever thought about such a very natural occurrence. We swallow about 2,000 times a day. And when we get older, our functional declines happen. And so it also matters that our swallowing system might not function appropriately any longer. We have an incidence rate of about 7 to 20 percent of people over the age of 65 who suffer from dysphagia in various stages. Some of them even don't know that they suffer some, from such a problem. But one of the risks of dysphagia could be that, uh, in fact, you develop pneumonia or you have COPD, a constructive um, lung disease. And so it kind of interacts with your overall health and finally could lead to an early death. Well, if you ask me why do such foods already exist on the market, I would have to say there are not enough food on the market for people suffering from such a problem, mainly for those who do not live in an institution or who are living independently at home. And for them, there is really a lack of products available that they can go out in a store, in a retailer, and buy a food that actually meets their needs to have what we all want to have, a quality of life and have tasty and healthy food. It is there, but it's usually a food that is specially designed for hospitals or for nursing homes. Um, or you can buy it in special drug stores or pharmacies or in the internet. But what I would like to focus on is the overall everyday life situation because we have a lot of people that actually do have dysphagia and once they go to a normal store, it's very hard for them to find food that is uh, um, modified for their special needs or they have to have certain skills, cooking skills or preparation skills, purifying food, for example, or uh, modifying it with thickening agents. So there are um, food available, but what I would like to focus our main interest is, is on those people who are not in an institution that have and want to keep a normal life and want to socialize and eat together with family and friends. Well, first of all, I think it's a multidisciplinary approach and we have to be aware of what's going on. We have to understand the problem. So we have to look at the issue from various sides, including manufacturer, manufacturers, including healthcare professionals, including nutritionists, sociologists, but also um, those who are actually having the problem, the consumer himself. And then we need to understand where are some barriers in everyday life situation. How could we actually enhance the quality of life? Sometimes it just needs a small modification, an information on a food, how to prepare it in a way so that it actually fits the needs of someone suffering from dysphagia. Because as, as I told you at the beginning, dysphagia is a very large problem. It can have various stages and various grades of severity. So it actually depends at what, what end you look at. But I think that we still are not sensible enough to actually grasp what is going on there. And since we are a sit in a situation of a demographic change worldwide and all, all, all over Europe, we have to look at the needs. What are the actual living situations of those who have such kind of dysfunctionality? Many stakeholders, many players are involved and they actually would need a certain information. It's a difference if you talk to a food manufacturer or if you talk to a care healthcare professional or someone from academia. They all have to first sit together and find what's going on and have an awareness in order to develop certain communication strategies. And I think the most appropriate communication is just to address people in their daily needs and not just to discriminate them, you, you are sick, you are old, you are dysfunctional, but just to enhance and tell them, hey, we have a good solution for you to lead a better life. And if we transport that, I think we are on a good way. 
We are coming from a background of food technology, meaning that we look at the matrices of a food and try to understand what happens if we process it and how we could enhance it, how we could change an ingredient. But we also look at consumers' needs, so we have to look in both sides, coming from the production to the consumer, but also from the consumer's need, and then go back to the production. So if, if we find those two directions and bring it together, and I think that in our school we are addressing that issue and focus, I think that might be a good idea and helpful.